In this video, we're going to start section 6.3 of your textbook, which is over separation of variables. And we're going to look at finding both general and particular solutions. So we did a little bit of this in our last section, and we're going to continue that here and then take a look at some applications and move on to the logarithmic differential equation. So our first question is pretty straightforward. We are asked to find the general solution. And again, the general solution means that we're going to have a C involved. We're not going to solve for C. And we're going to use separation of variables. So this is a very, I think, easy equation. Again, we've done one like this. You can just do some cross multiplication here. And by doing that, I end up on the left side with y dy and on the right side with x dx, or vice versa, it really doesn't matter. And again, remember, once we separate those variables, we're going to integrate each side. And so using that power rule, the integral of y, or antiderivative of y, is y squared over 2 plus c. And again, I'm not going to put the plus c. As I did in my last video, remember I could put a plus c here, and then of course this would be x squared over 2 plus c. And I just think it gets a little complicated with c1, c2. And so what we end up doing is saying, okay, I would have a c there, but I would subtract it anyway, and therefore it's just not worthwhile. Again, we don't really love to have fractions in our problems or in our solutions, so we're going to multiply everything by 2. That gives me y squared equals x squared. And again, technically that's going to be a 2c2, but that's just a new constant, so c3 if you want to keep track of how many c's we've had. But it's uh, pretty typical to just leave that as c. You don't need to keep those subscripts on there. So in terms of the correct way to write the general solution, quite often you will see y squared minus x squared equals c. Or if they ask you to find this um, explicitly for y, so if they want y equals, then of course you could do that as well. You would have y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus c. Typically, this is going to be the way that you're going to want to leave it. Let's take a look at another question. In this one, we're asked to find the particular solution. So to start, you're going to do exactly what we did on our last question, which is to find the general solution first. And then all we're going to do is we're going to use this initial condition to plug it in to find the particular solution. So to begin, keep in mind that when you see y prime, it's okay to rewrite that as dy over dx. That is the method that I choose. Again, your textbook doesn't show it that way, and that's fine too. But I'm going to go ahead and start with y and then dy over dx minus e to the x equals 0. So that's going to be my first step is just replace y prime with dy over dx. Now I'm going to separate my variables. So I'm going to keep the y's on the left side, y dy, because again, that's the numerator. I'm going to add e to the x to each side. And I'm sorry, yes, that's going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to multiply by dx. So here's what I have now. y dy equals e to the x dx. Again, once I've separated, now I'm going to integrate. So to integrate, Again, using the power rule, this is y squared over 2 plus c, and you don't need to add the plus c. On the right side, remember the integral of e to the x is e to the x plus c. So from here, I'm going to multiply first by 2 because I don't like that fraction. And now I have y squared equals 2e to the x plus 2c. But again, I'm just going to write that as c because it's a brand new constant. So on our last question where we were asked to find the general solution, we could have stopped right here or we could have moved things around so that 
the x and the y were on the same side of our equation. In this one, we're asked to find the particular solution, so we need to take this a step further. So I'm going to start with y squared minus 2, uh, sorry, equals 2 e to the x plus c. And remember, to find the particular solution, all I'm doing is solving for c. That's all I have to do. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to take this guy right here and plug it in. So this is telling me that if I plug in 0 for x, y is 4. So 4 squared equals 2 times e to the 0 because x is 0, and again plus c. Now from here it's just algebra, right? So 4 squared is 16, 2 times e to the 0, remember e to the 0 is 1, anything to the 0 power is 1, so this is 2 plus c, and then I would subtract 2 from each side to get 14 equals c. So my final solution would be to replace c with my solution of 14. So y squared equals 2 e to the x plus 14. Again, if you wanted to move things around, you could, but there is no standard way for you to write that final solution. Just one more example before we look at a new application of differential equations. This one asks us to find the equation of the curve that passes through the point 0, 2 and has a slope of y prime equals x over 4y. Now this might seem like a different kind of question than what we've done before, but this is really a find the particular solution type of question, just worded a little bit differently. So you're going to find that we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done before. So we're going to start with y prime, which I'm going to write, I'm going to change colors here, uh, we're going to write that as dy over dx equals x over 4y, and again, separation of variables, I'm going to multiply each side by 4y, so that's 4y dy, and multiply each side by dx, which gives me x dx. Once I have my variables separated, I can now integrate with respect to their um, individual variables, so 4y with respect to y and x with respect to x. So I'm going to get 4, again this is times y squared over 2, so if you want to go straight to 2y squared that's fine. Um, I'm actually just going to leave it as 4y squared over 2 for now. Again plus c, you don't have to write the plus c since we're going to put it on the right side. Uh, integrating x, we get x squared over 2, and then plus c, and now you can see why I didn't reduce the 4 divided by 2, because I'm going to multiply everything by 2, just so that I don't have any fractions. So 4y squared equals x squared plus 2c, which is just a new c. So again, if they just asked for the general solution, that would be it. To find the equation of the curve, we're going to use um, that general solution and solve for c because this again is going to be the equation of the curve. So let's take it to the next step here. Again it passes through 0, 2, so 4 times 2 squared because again obviously this is x, this is y. x is 0, so 0 squared plus c. 4 times 2 squared is 16 and then this is 0 squared plus c, therefore 16 is equal to c. So the equation of the curve that passes through the point 0, 2 is 4y squared equals x squared plus 16, or more typically 4y squared minus x squared is equal to 16. The last example I want to work with you on is an example involving orthogonal trajectories. So an orthogonal trajectory is very common in electrostatics, thermodynamics, etc. because quite often you'll have something, for instance in thermodynamics, where the flow of heat across a plane surface is orthogonal to the isothermal curves. Essentially what we're talking about here is that you're going to have a family of curves 
and we're going to find another family of curves that is orthogonal. And orthogonal just means that it's perpendicular. So we're talking about these being right angles. So every time the curve from one family intersects another family, they intersect at a right angle. So let's take a look first at our original equation. This is my original equation. And what I have sketched here on my graph is I have sketched x squared equals 1y, which is, of course, the red one. I have sketched x squared equals 4y, which is this blue guy. I have sketched x squared equals negative y, which is my green line, and I have sketched x squared equals negative 4y, which is that purplish line. Just to give you an idea, and again, the family of curves would be all of the values of c. So I have just sketched a couple for you to give you an idea of what the first family would look like. Now, what I want to do is find the orthogonal trajectories. I want to find the new family that creates these circles, which of course is where they would meet at a 90 degree angle. Luckily, we know that when we have the slope of a line, that if we take the opposite reciprocal slope, if we flip the slope over and change the sign, it's going to give us a perpendicular line. So that's what we're going to do here. My original equation is x squared equals cy. So what I want to do is find the derivative of that, again, because the derivative is the slope of the line. So I need to find the slope of my original line. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The, the derivative of cy is cy prime. And I'm just going to get, and again, you can write y prime as dy over dx, just to keep with the way that we have been doing this. And again, I want to isolate that. So I'm going to divide each side by c. So 2x over c is equal to dy over dx. Now, what is c? Because I can't just keep a c in there, right? So instead of C, I'm going to manipulate this guy and say C is actually the same thing as X squared divided by Y, just by dividing each side by Y. So now I'm going to say that this is 2X divided by X squared divided by Y is equal to DY over DX. And by doing just a little bit of simplification there, I get that 2 y over x is equal to dy over dx. So again, I just substituted, I did some rearranging here by dividing by y to get something I could substitute in for c because I couldn't leave c. So this is the slope of my original lines. So my original family of curves has a slope of 2y over x. Now I need to find the orthogonal trajectory. So from here, I'm going to say, if I want the orthogonal trajectory, I need the opposite reciprocal slope of that. So let me switch colors. Now I've got dy over dx, and this is for the, or, whoops, make sure I don't forget half the word, orthogonal trajectory dy over dx is going to be negative x over 2y. So again, just flipping over the 2y over x and changing the sign. Now from here, I'm just going to do the same you know, series of steps that I've been working on for quite some time now, which is of course to separate my variables. So I'm going to multiply each side by 2y. So I get 2y dy, multiply each side by dx. So I get negative x dx. Now I'm going to integrate Oops, well, sorry about that. Integrate. So I left this 2 on the outside. Obviously, if I integrate y, I get y squared over 2. If I integrate negative x, I get negative x squared over 2. 
and then plus C. And then, of course, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So I get 2y squared equals negative x squared plus 2c, which is just a different c. And then I'm going to rewrite it so I have x squared plus 2y squared is equal to c. So what exactly have I done? I have found the equation for all of, I should have used a different color there because you can't see it once I get on there. All of these circles, well ellipses, they're not circles, all of these ellipses that I've drawn, I used this equation. I used x squared plus 2y squared and then I just plugged in a value for c, like 16 and 4, etc. So that's Essentially, all you have to do for a question like that is you're finding the slope of the original line, you're flipping it over and changing the sign to make it perpendicular, which is what orthogonal means, is to be perpendicular, and then doing that same process that we've been going through. Up next, we're going to take a look at the logistic differential equation.